Hey, my name's Jenna. Um, I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but I think a part of me has been blocking myself. But today it just feels like I need to do it. So I just want to talk to you about ME um, and what it actually feels like to suffer with this illness that so many people just don't acknowledge, including the medical profession. You'll have to excuse me because I'm out with my, my little daughter, so she's currently sleeping, but she might wake up. <laughs> um, okay, so ME. I was diagnosed when I was 17 um, after having glandular fever. Couldn't have happened at the worst time, really. Uh, I was doing my A-levels. Um, had spent my whole childhood wa sort of working towards them um, because I wanted to be a doctor. Ironically, <laughs> um, and I think I was just completely overdoing it at college. Lots of subjects, uh, lots of extracurricular, and it was just too much. So all of this pressure I was putting on myself was just completely detrimental. Um, I think the problem was I didn't really stop. So even when I was ill, I kept going and going and going. And, you know, despite what my teachers were saying, what the principal was saying to me, you know, even take a year out, that's what they were suggesting, but I was too stubborn. Um, because I had my goal in mind and I didn't want to stop. That's kind of who I am, a little bit stubborn. <laughs> uh, so, uh, from glandular fever, it kind of just went down from there, really. Um, it came to a point where things were so bad that, you know, despite trying to work from home, which I did, you know, I finished my A-levels and, you know, I was really proud of that achievement. I worked from home, I worked from my bedroom, in fact I worked from my bed um, every single day, even Christmas Day, to get, you know, get the grades that I needed to go to medical school, which is what I did. I got the grades. But unfortunately, because of my illness, I didn't get a place at medical school. Um, but, you know, I understand. That's to be expected. They need people who are fit and healthy who are going to, you know, stand up to that challenge of working such long hours um, as well as studying. Um, but anyway, you know, from that point onwards, my life just became about being confined, really, to the house. Um, confined to my bed mostly. I think it's really hard for people to understand this illness because they don't see it. It's a hidden illness. So when people see someone who has ME, they think, oh, well, it can't be that bad. You know, they look fine. Um, but in actuality, on a good day, yeah, maybe someone with ME might feel okay. They're not going to feel 100%, but they need to go out, they need to experience some kind of normality. The problem is, when they do that, then they tend to suffer for it, either that same day or the next day, or for following days. It's the price you pay, really, to try and have some kind of normality in your life. But, you know, I can't speak for anyone else. I can only tell you what my experience was like. And it's like, at, it, at its worst, it just felt like I was a prisoner in my own body. Not not just my house, but my body, because it didn't work anymore. I was 17, 18 years old. All of my friends were going off to university, like I really was desperate to do. And yet I was confined to my bed. Now this kind of illness, it's, you know, lots of people say, oh, it's just, you know, you feel a bit tired. No, you don't. It's, it's like an unexplainable feeling. Um, and the best I can, you know, liken it to is the worst flu you've ever had in your life, where your whole body aches continuously. Um, you can't move, you don't want to move, you don't want daylight, you don't want anything. Um, it's like a draining feeling, like from the core of your body, it feels like everything's being drained from you there. But it's, it's a painful drain. Um, and you just, you can't move and you can't think because you get such brain fog, like, you know, trying to make sense of the world just is very difficult. 
but you know this this feeling just meant that it was painful to even turn myself over when I was laying in bed so at 18 I was completely dependent upon my my mum um, who would brush my hair for me who would cut my food and feed me you know who would help me downstairs and it's not easy to kind of have your freedom taken away from you especially when you're so young and you don't really understand being so young as well I felt so isolated I mean I'm sure older people who have ME felt the same way or feel the same way but as a young person you're whole life to that point has been education where you're surrounded by people your own age and people you can talk to and you know everyone's having fun and at 18 everyone's going out and you know being a bit silly but I was stuck at home with my family all the time now I absolutely love my family I really do but it's so isolating when you don't have the company of your friends or people your own age and I tend to find, well, I found, I should say, that once I was taken out of the, you know, the situation of being at college and being around my friends, then it was like a case of out of sight, out of mind. I didn't really, I didn't really see my friends. I didn't really hear from them very often. Um, I didn't really speak to them because one of those, uh, one of those symptoms that comes with ME is it's incredibly difficult to speak. It's so tiring. I mean, you take it for granted, something as simple as just having a conversation. But to someone with ME that's quite severe, or very severe, it's an incredible drain on your resources. So even, you know, having a conversation on the phone for 10 minutes didn't really happen very often. It was something that I didn't want to do. I couldn't listen to people's voices either, it was, it was very tiring. So you just feel like you have a complete sensory, sensory overload. You can't, deal with, you can't deal with light, you can't deal with sound, you can't deal with speaking, you can't deal with moving. Your body doesn't have a clue what's going on so your, your gut goes crazy, you can't digest food properly. I went off food completely, I lost about two and a half stone which, you know, causes, you know, further problems. I couldn't think straight, my memory went to shit. There's also this strange things that happen, you know, you can't, you can't recall words. I found that to be like one of the worst things because I try and have a conversation with someone and the words just would not come to me as much as I tried. And then I think I became very conscious of the fact that I couldn't get words, words to come out. So it made it worse. I think you just become your illness because you don't seem to have any other life. So people don't know what to say to you. It becomes very awkward. I mean, what can they say? I completely understand. You know, if your life is your home and in particular it's your bedroom and you spend most of your time with your eyes closed, then what is there to talk about? So you do, you develop this sense of self that is completely based on your illness. It's not based on who you really are. And then other people adopt it as well. And then you become so confused, so depressed. That's a further symptom of ME. You know, mentally it's incredibly difficult to, to function. I mean, your body doesn't work anymore. Everything that you wanted has kind of been taken away and you don't know if you're ever gonna have it back. So, you know, it's logical that you might spiral, which is what I did. I didn't really know how to cope anymore. You know, my whole childhood was me wanting to be a doctor. That's all I wanted. And I'd worked so hard for it and I'd got the grades, but it wasn't going to happen. So I had to, I had to process this information as well as everything else that was going on. And I think that's when you search for some kind of validation. 
you know, what am I now if I don't have the thing that I was basing everything on? Because that's what I was doing, you know. I wanted to, I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to help people like me, ironically. <laughs> but it wasn't gonna happen that way. And I didn't deal with it particularly well. I ended up sort of spiraling so deep into this depression that everything was really dark. And I self-harmed. I self-harmed for a long time and my family didn't know because I just didn't want them to know. It was, it was for me, it was like a, a release, a physical release from this like mental anguish that is indescribable. And then when the self-harm wasn't any good anymore, I think I self-harmed in a different way. I developed eating disorders. I'd, I'd lost weight anyway because of the decrease in my appetite. So I'd gone from being not chubby, but you know, I was never a skinny teenager, not really. Um, at college I wasn't skinny, but I wasn't fat. But I'd lost two and a half stone and it was noticeable. And people were saying, oh, you look good. To a point. And then past that point, people were starting to worry because I didn't look good. And I think looking back, I didn't see that I didn't look good. But I was bony and my hair was falling out. My period stopped. You know, all of those things that come with eating disorders, they're all happening. But that was how I was getting validation. You know, if I couldn't be well and I couldn't do what I wanted, then at least I could be thin. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are plenty of other girls who have had similar experiences. I just think it's really important for people to understand that this illness isn't just feeling tired or not wanting to go to work or being a bit lazy. It's extreme. I think it's a killer and if it doesn't kill you physically, it can kill you mentally. And it's not just the person who's suffering from the illness, you know, it's the whole family that are burdened with what comes with it. I felt that all the time, I felt like a burden. I was placing so much pressure on my, my mum in particular who was the person who took the most care of me. Because it was like her having a toddler to look after. I think I found the personal care side of things like the most difficult to deal with. But I mean, my, lo my mum loves me so I never got the, the sense that she begrudged it but it's it must be so difficult to see your child in that kind of state you know she she saw me when I was at my most determined um, with so much ahead of me and then it all just went away or it didn't just go away it crumbled away It must be so hard to have to watch your young daughter, you know, not be able to feed herself and to lose so much weight and to, I don't know, just fall into this sort of pit of despair. And to not know whether she's gonna come out. Of that was the thing, I mean, this was, in the early 2000s so the medical profession was just at a loss really I was told that I would never recover um, that it was unlikely at least which I've heard so many people talk about if I'm honest I'm, I don't know what the current medical stance is on this I know that I had occupational therapy, um, cognitive behavioural therapy, all of these different things. 
none of which really did a great deal. I just wanted to give some people some hope really. That's all I wanted to do with this video and to kind of enlighten people as to what it is genuinely like to be chronically ill. This was my life for eight years and it varied with intensity. Sometimes it felt like it was improving. Crazily enough, I had a baby when I was um, suffering quite severely. Um, I didn't even know I was pregnant because of the eating disorder. Strangely enough, after having the, the baby, um, my symptoms improved, which was great. Um, they improved enough for me to actually go to university. Not to study medicine, but um, something completely different actually. However, I suffered a relapse, um, sort of, when was it? 2013, I think. Um, and I think that was a massive wake up call for me because I thought I'd really blown it. You know, I'd worked so hard to improve my health and to get to a place where I was, you know, feeling some sort of normality. And then, you know, bang, I was back in bed. I needed my mum's help, you know, more so now because I had a young child to look after. Um, and this went on for weeks, weeks and weeks just passed by and I was in bed and I couldn't really look after myself properly again. So I really did think I'd really fucked up. Um, thankfully, the universe has a way of shining its light. Um, I met this person who changed my perception on things, changed my perception on health. Um, and how my body works, basically. So, to cut a long story short, for this video at least, I changed everything in my life, absolutely everything, from, you know, the way that I was thinking, the way that I was eating, the way I was expressing myself, the way people were speaking to me, everything had to change. And as a result, my symptoms improved slowly, um, slowly at first, and then after the course of several months um, I was starting to notice that I wasn't having bad days anymore. You know, they were getting further and further apart and then got to a point where I wasn't having any more. And this meant that I could go to the gym and I could build up some of the muscle that I did not have. Um, I'd had physio and the physio had told me that I'd got no muscle. So, you know, that was a course of several months where I was training as often as I could just to build up, build up some muscle. Um, and I was starting to feel good. I was starting to feel healthy and optimistic that my life could be different. Which is kind of how I want to end this video, really. Just... just on a positive note things don't have to continue the way that they are if you're watching this because you have ME or because someone you know has it then you need to know that it doesn't have to be as bad as it is and there is light at the end of the tunnel I can assure you because I've done it I've changed my whole life and I've changed my health I'm just finishing my master's degree now um, with a toddler <laughs> and a 10 year old, which has been um, fun, shall we say. But anyway, that's for another video. I wanted to discuss how I did that um, with the hope that maybe it will help you do the same. So take care.